Monte Carlo or and Monte Carlo Tree Search. So uh, the last stream, uh, let me just share with you what happened. Um, so this is the game of Nim. You start with N matchsticks. Every turn, players will take from 1 to K matchsticks from this pool. And the player which takes the last matchstick loses. So this is the game um, look. Okay, I changed one thing here. I just changed the reward here. So um, the reward here would be a 1 if the current play if the next player's turn is 1. So I realized that there was this issue here. Where I put this as 2. Okay, hence... Uh, affecting a lot of um, what the agent moves are over here. So instead of uh, turn one being player one's move, because of that mistake in the reward, it became the other way around. It became like if turn one, it became player two's move. So um, as such, later on when I coded the random agent it, and the Monte Carlo agent uh, like in the last stream, it actually became such that the Monte Carlo agent lost all the games. But actually in, in, in actual fact, it's actually the random agent that lost. But it's because of this small little typo here okay uh yeah which is already fixed so we can see that um we have a game here which basically plays until um, it's done and then for each turn the corresponding agent gets to move okay is given how many matchsticks in the environment there are uh, how many up to how many matchsticks you can move and uh, what are the valid moves here okay so um the tournament is basically you play a series of uh, num games number of games Okay, and then we record how many times each agent wins. Okay, we have some sample agents like the random agent and the perfect agent. Random agent just uh, samples a random move. And the perfect agent here is being coded with the uh, perfect game logic. So basically, the idea of the game is to make the game end at 1 mod k plus 1. Okay, why 1 mod k plus 1? It's because by doing so, we can ensure that um, when it comes for the opponent move, uh, make a move, you can then choose a corresponding move to make the sum of your moves, his and your move, add up to k plus 1. So it's a set of k plus 1. That is possible because the maximum move he can make is up to k. And so you can choose 1, then become k plus 1. He can also choose 1, then you can choose k, then you become k plus 1 as well. So by doing so, you remove sets of k plus 1. Eventually, the last remainder, one match deck, will be chosen by the opponent. Okay, so this is done here. Okay, if you're unable to do so, it means that you're given the one mod k plus one to begin with, then you just choose a random move. Okay, that, that's how we do it. Okay, we run some games, so the random agent to the perfect agent, the perfect wins, the perfect wins, okay, in a tournament, random versus random is about the same, perfect wins all the time, perfect wins all the time, uh, perfect versus perfect, if it's 21, okay, it's a one mod um, four, one mod three plus one, so um, it means the first player loses. Uh, the first player, okay, let me think about it. One mod. Okay. Let me see. Let's see how it plays out. Three become eight then. One, one, three, two, two, one, three, two, two, one. Okay, so. It turns out that um, oh, this is actually player two. So player two takes the best stick, and then over here player one, but here player one wins. So the reward seems to be a bit wrong. Okay, so maybe what I need to do is. It's always be player two wins okay so there's some issue with the game so let's try to put this out so it looks like the issue is here if the reward is one then it's player one win right yeah then actually that, that makes sense okay so the environment reward was one when player one took the match take then it becomes two Okay, looks like I have to revert this back to the origin. Uh, originally it was like that. Self dot turn equals to two, and then um, what I did to change it was I just changed this turn here to be two instead, so that the right agent would receive the move. Okay, but let's see. 
I think this this should still work. Okay, this should still work. This you see, if let's say it's player one turn, he takes the last match stick, then it becomes player two, right? Then it should be player one's win. Okay, so over here, if let's say uh the environment reward is one, it means player one win. That's that's correct. Let, let's try again. Player one wins. Okay, we give a random agent instead. Player two wins. So player two takes the last match sticks and player two wins. Um, okay, that's not correct. <laughs> that's not correct. Okay, um so when player two takes the last match stick, okay, the reward will be one. If self dot turn equals equals to one. Okay, so if player two takes it, this will be self dot turn equals to three minus two because it starts from player two and self dot turn will be one. And then we can see that player one will win. Okay, after we do the move. Okay, so if we look here, like this random agent versus perfect agent, we should see like player two takes okay so i think the issue is this thing here okay so player one two one two one two points you wish two here so we should start with player turn number one okay and then when we return this self dot turn is actually the next turn so what we should do is like this We should take three minus ten. Okay, so I, I just do some uh so we should start with uh self dot turn is one, we start player one, and then here should be the previous turns move because we already swapped the turns. Okay, so let's try again. So now you see random agent versus perfect, perfect wins. Okay, so we swap the, the signs. Okay, so I think we have we have swapped, swapped it correctly already. So we play the tournament, we should still see the perfect agent win like almost all the games and here random versus perfect yeah player two wins okay perfect okay so yeah so the perfect agent will lose the first game and uh perfect agent will win all the times if let's say you can pass it to be a one mod uh, for which in this case you can see if we were to run a game with the perfect agent and a perfect agent and then you give it like 21 uh 20, 22 and 3 the first player would just take one match stick all the time to give it 21 to the next player and so the first player would always win okay if you make it 23 you will see that it will take two match sticks to make it 21 make it 24 it will take three to make it 21 and you'll win but if 25 the first player will lose because the first player has no good move it will just take a random move in this case in the perfect agent's case Okay, so now the Monte Carlo agent, we can see that the Monte Carlo is just basically for each move we just do the rollout and then we see whether um uh we see what is the move that gives the highest reward. Okay, the random rollout basically just um returns a game with two random agents playing with each other uh after we have taken that move. So let's see. So we run a tournament of four games for all this. Let's just run all this. So Monte Carlo versus Monte Carlo, uh, because the first uh, move is 21. So theoretically, the first player would always lose if the Monte Carlo agent was perfect. Okay, but the Monte Carlo agent is not very perfect. It doesn't really look ahead that far. It's two versus two. So you can see like random agent versus Monte Carlo agent. Uh, we should expect the Monte Carlo agent to win most of the time because the Monte Carlo agent is the one that really um, can evaluate the, the value of a certain move. Okay, indeed, you see that the Monte Carlo agent wins all the games, which is as expected. And we go to the next one. The next one will be uh, Monte Carlo agent versus random. And I expect Monte Carlo to win all the time, uh, or most of the time, because uh, random agent just takes random move. Monte Carlo, at least, it has some sense of the value of the state. Okay, in this case, not perfect, but it wins most of the time, so it's acceptable. So now we check how strong is the Monte Carlo agent. We let the perfect agent play against the Monte Carlo agent and we see how good it is. So the perfect agent is still better. Right? It wins all the time. Then we change the game to make it the Monte Carlo agent as player 1 and perfect as player 2. In this case, um, the first player always loses. So I expect a uh, perfect agent to always lose. Sorry, Monte Carlo agent to always lose in this game of name with 21 match sticks. Okay, so yeah, perfect agent wins all the time.
So I, I wanted to improve the efficiency of the Monte Carlo agent because sometimes Monte Carlo agent, um, it may not pick the right outcome because um, it just randomly simulates the opponent's moves. And then it sometimes simulates the opponent as playing very badly also, which isn't the case. Okay, In some games, there are some optimal strategies. So you don't want to just simulate random play. So assuming we have a, move, a perfect play, of course, this is not going to happen in real life if the game is very difficult. You don't have like a heuristic or like in this case, I can code out a perfect play because I know that this game has a perfect play that is math proven. Okay, it's just for ease of analysis. But let's suppose we have it. We can actually improve Monte Carlo by actually letting it pit against a perfect play agent. I mean, it would be best if both agents are perfect play. Okay, like Alpha Go Zero, um, it approximates the agents to be more and more closer to perfect play. So in this case, I just fix one of them as my perfect agent, and then we see how it how it goes. So this is the Monte Carlo perfect opponent. And then if we play against the random, it should do pretty well. Okay, we can also try to see against perfect to see how, how far it is from perfect. Let me just change this to perfect agent. And then maybe here, just want to copy this in here. Yeah, let's just let's see how this is. Yeah, so against random agent, this Monte Carlo perfect agent, because I think as the perfect agent um as the response here, it does extremely well. It like wins all the games now. So against the perfect agent, how good is this Monte Carlo perfect agent? I mean it's still not perfect because it doesn't have all the rules as a perfect, but it has like half the brain of the perfect. At least when it re responds with opponent moves in the rollouts, it responds perfectly. And uh, yeah, you see, it, it actually wins the perfect agent in, in as player two, which is not bad. Yeah, it means that this is actually quite a good uh, simulation of the value of the state already. Okay, but we, we won't get this, unfortunately, in real life. Okay, we have to do something different. Uh, we have to do something like AlphaGo Zero, or we can do Monte Carlo Tree Search, which we will do later. So uh, yeah, this is how it is right now. Okay, so um, this is almost perfect already. Okay, so our aim is to approximate perfect. Okay, this is a bit cheating because we actually gave it the insights of the perfect agent in our rollouts. Okay, which is not going to happen if you want to learn by self-play. Okay, so um, next is Monte Carlo Tree Search. We want to make the opponent, okay, play close to perfect play, like a minimax. Okay, so each will choose to maximize the reward. Okay, and uh, we choose the move um, by the exploit exploit trade off, and the final move selected will be the move, the root move that is exploit the most. So this is how Monte Carlo tree search look like. Select a node, expand the node, simulate out the game with a rollout, and then we do a back propagation. So the rollout can be like similar to a perfect rollout, or it could be this random rollout. We could use one of this for the rollouts. Okay, and then we do the back propagation. Okay, so now I just code this note out here. I was coding this halfway, then I decided maybe I should stream this. So uh, first we should select what note we want to choose, okay? Or rather we should make the, okay, we don't do the selection yet. So we do have like maybe a class Monte Carlo tree search. Okay, later we will do this, okay? Okay, we will just, okay, maybe I just do the tree search one first. Okay, we have a tree search and then we have self dot root equals to like a note. equals to root node okay and then like we do the selection okay uh and then what we do is like we will do like uh define select current node okay and then this game when we do a select for the current node what we will do is we will do the ucb algorithm to choose the next node so um next node equals to ucb we just put ucb here okay and then uh what we'll do is okay for each in current node dot child okay for child in each in, okay we will just calculate the ucb of that okay uh what we'll do is Okay. So maybe what we'll do is max value is zero and then max node equals to zero. 
Okay, max value and max node. Okay. Okay, and then maybe the max value can be like the yeah, max value should be maybe like minus one thousand. <laughs> and then what we do is we will do by the UCB algorithm. Okay, so the UCB algorithm is uh it's like this V plus this. Okay, let me just put the UCB algorithm here as well. Okay, this is the UCB algorithm. Okay, so you want to do something like that. Uh, UCB equals to parent node child dot value plus exploration constant. Okay, so maybe over here we have like So we have the exploration constant times the um, mp dot square root of this value here, mp dot logarithm of uh, n, which is the total number of self dot ether equals to zero times the simulation uh, number of simulation divided by self dot. Okay, maybe in this case, we don't need to put the ether here. We can put the ether in the root. Self dot root dot n. Okay, and then we divide it by self dot divided by child dot n. Okay, and yeah, we don't want to divide by zero, so maybe we will do this plus one. Instead of doing this, we can do plus one, or we can do like plus epsilon or so. So yeah, that that would work as well. But plus one would be better, I think, because then this will not be like a very large number. It's like zero plus epsilon, this number might be very huge. Okay, so like something like that. And then uh, what we'll do is, yeah, I think like this would do. So if UCB is greater than max value, then max value will be equals to UCB and then max node will be equals to child. Yeah, so then what we do is we return the max node in the end based on explore exploit. Okay, so uh, that's what we do next. And then after that, we have like expansion. So Okay, if uh if there's no child, okay, then what we'll do is we'll just expand out this. No, actually the current not dot child. Okay, so actually all this I need to put in the init already. So self dot value self dot add self dot child okay so we need to actually like and then we also need to put like self dot uh because if let's say we we go to a certain node okay and then we choose by ucb a node okay and then we want to expand out here so when we choose by ucb we need to like cater for all possible children already so we need to sort of know what are the valid moves for this so that we can get a child. Okay, so uh, yeah, let me think about how, how to do this. Okay, so we have the root, we have the select, we have the expand. This one uh just okay. If let's say we do not have if we do not have all children we expand okay because if after we select a certain node okay based on the ucb actually i think we need to have all the nodes already because you want to do the ucb you also need to do the the unseen childs as well so let me think about how to do this ucb thing uh 
Yeah, let's see whether I've got all the values already. So I've got and so I've got values, so I've got child, so I've got parent. Yeah. We do need to give a parent. So yeah. So uh yeah, this should be it for the mode. And then the multi color tree search where we call the init, we call the root node, and then we call the exploration constant C. Okay, uh we select Okay, what, what, where am I? I'm at the select step. So I, I kind of want the child to be like all the valid moves for the parent itself. Uh, it should give me all the valid moves actually for this child. Mm. Maybe I should have a valid moves here. Mm -hmm. How do I know whether all the children are being filled up? Okay, so this is the issue because these children here, I want to link it to the to the node for the child, but I want to actually link it to all the valid moves. So parent node dot child. Yeah, maybe what we need to do is for the node itself, we actually need to like do some logic for the valid moves self dot mesh stick okay then this one we don't call it n we call it explore okay so the exploration constant is one the mesh stick will be n and then self dot self dot n is n and self dot k is k Okay, and then the children over here will be based on the valid moves. We can probably uh like if if the child does not have all the valid moves, so if the child Okay, we do want to have all the valid moves here so what we do is we'll possibly need to take in the valid moves from this game state like this uh, we could just use this function to give our own valid moves Yeah, like that. Yeah, so I, I do give a state for this in the node, like the list of valid moves. So basically, I want my child to actually be part of this list of valid moves. Later, I'll just pop this out. So if length of this child, okay, is smaller than, okay, basically, we, what we can do is we can do like length of current node dot child. Okay, so if we reach a node, if we do not have the children, then we expand and get the next one. Okay. Otherwise, we will... The UCB algorithm to choose the best node. So yeah, we will ensure that we have like all these child nodes expanded first before we go to the UCB algorithm. Okay, I mean, that makes sense. We want to like sort of visit all child at least once, right? So what we can do is if this length current node of valid moves is less than, uh, is greater than zero, then what we'll do is we'll do an expansion. Self.expand. We can just return self.expand. We return the node for this. Self.expand. V. 
you do not have the children then expand and return the next one okay so i've got expand or not dot We expand the current node with the move itself. So, uh, pop the first one. Yeah, we expand by the next move like that. Return self that expand next move. Otherwise, we do the UCT and return the max node. So we do this select. You can do select to your end of three. Wow. Uh, our self dot select node. Okay, we kind of need to figure out when. Uh, when we ever, whenever we do an expansion, okay, I guess that's the end of the current node. So we could return this self the expand, and uh, we can just run this self the expand because we kind of want the node. So true, and then here false, okay. Oh, wow, true. Okay, we do this. Okay, uh, next note. Note done equals to this. Wow, well, not done. Okay. Okay, we basically just keep running this. When done is true, okay, because this will tell us this is true or this is false, then we basically have the last node already. Then we can do the evaluation over here. So when we already have the last node, we can evaluate the node. Okay, so maybe we just call this M define uh, run. Okay. Do selection to to last node. Okay. Then evaluate the node's value with a row out. And then we do a back propagate values upwards. So this is the, the loop. Okay, this is one run here. Okay. And then maybe over here, this one we need to have a node. We can just have the the, the run be starting from the root node. Okay, we start from the root node. Okay, so that's the run function. Okay, and then we do the select to select the next node. And then if we do not have all the children, we make the next move. We expand. So now we expand the node with the next move. So what we do is current node is the current node itself. So what we do we do is we need to do like this minus move. So we need to create a new node. Node current. So we need to have a node, the parent, okay, the n and the k. Okay, like that. So we append this to the current node's child, okay. And then basically all this n, k is will be okay. Uh, valid moves we need to Okay, value moves we don't really need to do because this will be automatically done. Okay, we need to have a parent which is given here already. So, we already have the expansion done. And uh, is that all? We return this node. Uh, we need to return this node here. Okay. 
new child equals to this. Okay, so we have done the expansion. Okay, now we need to do the rollout for this based on this simulation here. So evaluate the node's value with the rollout. So let's just use one of the rollout functions we've done earlier, random rollout n comma k. Okay, which gives us the reward of a random playthrough uh, from the next player's perspective. Or we could just run this. But I, I think we can just run random rollout n k. Yeah, let's just run the random rollout. And then we just negate the value to get the value of it. So um, it'll be here, random rollout. We can just negate the value here. So Because this was from the other perspective. So after we do this node, okay. Actually, we don't need to do the negative because this will be the value of that state itself. Random route node dot n node dot k. This will tell us the reward of the random route. Okay, and then uh, let me just put the route here. We can we can define the rollout where we declare the Monte Carlo tree sets later. Like where we declare the Monte Carlo tree sets, we can do this. No, twenty one three. Okay, which will give us this one here. No self dot explore. We don't need to have self dot explore actually, like that. We need, we need a self dot num. Self dot explore plus mp self dot root. This log n here is the ether the num. Num. Yep. Or num selected maybe to make it clear. Yeah. So we have this, so we can have the root. We can maybe do like that root node equals to node 21 3 to initialize this and the parent will be none. And then we can just do from the Monte Carlo tree search from the root node onwards. Rollout will be the random rollout. Yeah, and that, that's it. So we can run this. So we could just define like MCTS tree will be this. Okay. And then what we do is we can then run this n times. So like. We can run the MCTS dot. And then after that, we can select the best node. And we select the best node after that. We select the best move, which will mean we need to have okay. So what we do when we get the best move is we just need to uh do the UCB algorithm on okay. So maybe what we can do is we can just put like self.ucb and then the the So maybe we, it will be helpful to define a function for UCB. OK, 
the UCB is this. This one. For child in node dot child, we choose the UCB value. If the UCB is greater than that, we update the max value and the child. And then at, at the end of it, we just return the max node. Just return the max node. Yeah. So when we get the best move, we simply just take the UCB and we get this max max node here. So uh. So we get this. Uh, no, actually, we don't even need the UCB here. I realize. Yeah. So maybe the UCB can be. What we just need to do is we just need to. For child in self dot root. Dot child. Okay. We just basically find out the number of times we exploit ch children. So. We go to the children there and find out the number of times they have been export self dot n right self dot num selected. Best child is none. Uh, max selected equals to zero. Okay. If child dot child dot num selected greater than max selected, then what we do is we just update it. And then now uh, best child will be updated as well to be. And what we do is like return self dot root dot n minus this is actually the move that we make okay i mean we could have done a move parameter here as well so we could adapt this to to suit another game so that could be done as well but right now we could just because we know that if we just take the end of the parent and then we minus the end of the child which is the number of matchstick this will be the move itself yeah of course i mean i think i could do like uh, each of the child could actually correspond to a certain move as well. So that could be done. Okay, I will think about it later. But this is like the get best move right now. Okay, we haven't finished yet. We still need to do like the rollout. So after we do the rollout, we back propagate the nodes upwards. So, okay, then we need to do like while node.parent not equals to none. Okay. Yeah, we need to keep doing this yeah to reach the top node so uh no equals to node dot parent okay we can just do while true okay if node dot parent if not equals equals to none then we break. Okay, so what we do is we will just add the value for that node itself. So node equals to like the value, the value will be here. Uh node dot num selected plus equals to one. We increase the num selected. Node dot value plus equals to value. Okay, times a factor. So the factor will be like we just need to multiply the factor by by minus one each time to simulate like player one, player two, player one, player two. So we can do that. Num selected plus equals to one times value times factor to the factor, and then we go to the next 
move to the parent node. Okay, and then we just break when we actually reach the end of this simulation. So this is how we do this. Okay, so we update the value by the rollout value. Uh, update the num selected. And then we multiply by the factor and we move to the parent node and we do this back propagation. So every time we do Monte Carlo research, we do this thing one time and we do this run select, expand, simulate, back propagate. Select until the root node, ex uh, which includes the expansion in this select step as well. Okay. So what if we reach the end of the game? Okay, because like there could be a case whereby there's no valid move, right? So if we reach until the end of the game, we need to have a certain way of uh, of doing it. So if let's say, okay, if we reach the end of the game, okay, a child will have no valid moves, okay, and uh, okay, so we definitely need to figure out a way to solve for end of the game here. If it's end of the game, we don't really need to have the... Uh, we don't really need this rollout. Although the rollout will also give the value for end of the game because uh, if n is 0, it just returns 1. Okay? Which means that uh, the current player loses. Okay? So, um, if let's say the end of the game is reached here, the value here be 1 it means that when we back propagate we should back propagate the negative of this yeah this should be a negative because this is the, from the other player's perspective okay so we are almost done i just need to figure out a way to if this node is end of the game simply return the So if length current node got valid moves is zero and okay length of this child okay because that uh, end of the game has no uh, node okay so maybe what we can do is we can also do a like self dot win here okay I'll think about how to incorporate like the game information inside here without being so explicit here maybe we could give like each child a particular environment that we can query okay but as of now i just make it more explicit just to make it easier to code okay so if this one is like that okay and i reach the end of this game we simply return this note okay so we just return current note dot uh yeah just return current note and uh true otherwise we do the yeah okay so i think that's more or less done Okay, mcps dot get mass move. Okay, let's let's run it. I I think this should definitely fail. Okay, I don't see it working in the first try. Name move is not defined. Okay, so where's that? Current not minus move, minus next move. Because we expand it, when we expand the node, where's my expansion? Yeah, we expand the mode, we expand the next move. Okay. Rollout is not defined. Okay, I forgot to give the rollout. Oh, didn't I give it? Self root node rollout. Okay, this should be self dot rollout. Okay, because we, we store it here. Name child is not defined. So here child dot ucd child. It looks like we don't really need this ucd value anymore because we are just taking the, the, the max thing. So uh, what I can do is I can bring it back here, but it's okay, I can shift it outside here. But I just need to change what is this child here because the child is over here. So this should not be self dot ucd of the child should be self dot ucd of the current node oh okay, let's just do like maybe for like four okay the best move is three 
Oh, it looks like it's working. Okay, 6, it should be like 1. Oh, not bad. Oh, I, I honestly didn't expect it to work so fast. Okay, so if it's like 9, uh, it should give you anything because it's uh, 2n plus 1. But if let's say, sorry, 4n plus, if let's say 10, it should give me 9. So you keep, pick 1 all the time. Oh, wow. Oh, it's actually working. Wow. Oh, my this random nonsense here is working. Okay, that's amazing. I must have gained mastery of coding the Monte Carlo tree search. It didn't look like it would work straight away. Okay, let's just do the Monte Carlo tree search agent here. So, uh, NK valid moves. This one will just return N and K. Okay, because the first node is has no parent, so it's none. So that's why we we'll do the expansion or this uh is mainly for the back propagation. Okay, so actually my back propagation is correct. Wow, okay, so uh yeah, so the first value will be like that. Then you minus minus minus, and then after that, uh, UCB we select the based on the value plus this square on square term okay all right so anyway let, let's just see uh, whether this will work for i guess maybe when you run this 2500 times it sort of reached the end of the game right because it's it's a very simple game so maybe that's why um we done so well okay but let's just run this here so nk valid moves okay we run this 2500 times random row out select the best move and then we print okay not print yeah uh, we actually don't really need this valid move because we already considered this inside um the root node itself okay but one thing for sure is if you want to do this for any environment like we probably don't want to put like self.n self.k self.valid moves what we want to do is we want to store an environment parameter here okay which will tell us all these values just from the environment itself yeah i could modify that simply but uh, let's just see whether this works first so just uh this is a uh, returns the best move determined by mcts okay let's do this and then maybe what we do is we we'll just run some tournaments okay to so just make sure uh maybe i just call it mcts agent is a uh, very lengthy for this It's taking a while maybe because of the number of times we need to search yeah okay so it looks like okay let's let's try to do it 100 times uh, i mean we just use fewer search okay so if we use 100 times it it may not search uh, adequately but it's actually not bad for 100 times okay i mean it may not win all the time but it does look like it's winning hmm. okay how about mcts with mcts Okay, so it means that it did not search fully because the first player did not win all the time. I mean, if we run this like 500 maybe. Okay. Perfect agent and MCTS agent. Uh, it's still not exactly the best because it's like half half for this uh, it doesn't really do justice for this okay which means that actually it's it's not there yet maybe if i increase the search to 2500 let's see whether this wins against the perfect agent more times I guess if I were to do like perfect rollouts, it would be better. Oh, when I increase the search step, it actually performs worse. The perfect agent wins more times with increased search. That's interesting. 
Okay, maybe I there's something that went wrong here. Hmm. Okay, let's let's bring the search back to five. It could just be a fluke. We can try again. Yeah, but either way, it looks like the Monte Carlo tree search is uh, it looks like it's is working a bit. We can just try um doing this with the Monte Carlo agent. Then we see whether this works. Okay, maybe 2,500 is a bit too much. Right, let's, let's, let's use 500. Yeah, okay, so let's just run this with the Monte Carlo agent to see how it, how it works. And then we also have the Monte Carlo perfect opponent, perfect op agent. I could improve my rollout policy. I'm pretty sure this would actually lead to a better result. So the Monte Carlo agent lost to MCPS agent all the time, which is good. That's the result that we were hoping for. So it does look that the Monte Carlo tree search is a significant improvement over Monte Carlo. You see, I only ran this 500 times. Okay, but for the Monte Carlo search, okay, without the perfect play, I had to run it like uh, 1,000 times and it still couldn't work. Okay, so... Uh, it means that the Monte Carlo itself doesn't take into account like perfect play for the opponents. That's why it doesn't really do that well. Uh, because MCPS, they do have this uh, ex explore exploit thing. That, uh, what is it? Let's explore exploit. Uh, the UCB one. Yeah, this UCB part, which actually tells us like what's the next node to choose for each player. So there's some form of a minimax optimization here implicit in this, in this algorithm which Monte Carlo doesn't. Monte Carlo just views the game as a one-step game. That's why Monte Carlo tree search is, is uh, better for like multi-turn games. But it still isn't that great like for very, very high state space games. Yeah, so with a Monte Carlo perfect opponent, okay, it actually does perform better than MCTS, okay, because I believe the perfect play there has helped it. Okay, it gains 10 out of 0 to MCTS when it's supposed to lose in the first turn. So I, I think this one... the Answer is obvious. Okay, uh, MCTS would lose. Okay, so yeah, the perfect op op opponent agent seems to be like very good. Like even with the perfect play, the this perfect Monte Carlo perfect op is uh, close to perfect play already. Yeah. So yeah, if you look at it, if we play the perfect agent, actually this. In fact, with the perfect agent, the MCTS kind of uh, still can win with this configuration. Okay, this is this is uh, interesting. Why is it with the perfect agent, kind of MCTS agent can win, but with the Monte Carlo perfect op agent, it doesn't win. Okay, it's, it's, it's just weird. It's supposed to give around the same. I mean, I don't think the perfect agent is uh, lousier than this. So if this starts first, yeah. Maybe, I, I don't know, this is supposed to give some wins for MCTS agent because player 2 is supposed to win for this thing. I'm not too sure why why this doesn't. Yeah. yeah, interesting. We can take a look at one game and take a look and see what happens. Okay, player one takes three. So um one, two so player one is the Monte Carlo perfect op. Yeah, this is done correctly. Player two takes two match takes remaining takes two one three one three two two one two. So over here um this MCTS is not able to do it properly because it's supposed to give seventeen. That's the correct answer by chooses nineteen. 
and that's likely because the search is like maybe 500 i make this 2500 let's see what happens okay it still doesn't choose correctly even with 2500 let's try again ah there we go okay so it may be because Monte Carlo tree search sometimes is a uh, is luck dependent. You need to choose the right outcome. So it does seem that increasing the search depth or search iterations does help it to find better solutions. Okay, so maybe we can do some tweaking with this UCB value. Okay, but I think the main thing is oh I forgot to do something. I realize I forgot to divide by the, oh okay there's something wrong here. This value here is wrong. I forgot to divide it. Okay, no wonder, no wonder. Okay, I forgot to divide this value. Okay, with self dot num selected. We we kind of need to divide it. Yeah. Okay. Okay, let's try five hundred. Okay, we stop this for what? We try five hundred. Okay, so uh, there was a slight mistake with MCTS. Uh, I'm supposed to divide the value to get the average value. If not, the more times you choose a node, the higher the value would be. So it seems that like in this case, it kind of balances because when you choose more and you lose more, you also minus. But uh, in order to balance out the explore term, which kind of maybe got neglected, okay, if this term keeps increasing in value. Yeah, so this part was uh, a mistake. So we can see that, okay, uh, perfect agent, Monte Carlo tree search agent, yeah, the Monte Carlo tree search agent kind of wins lesser now. Yeah. Yeah, it, the perfect agent wins almost all the games now. So actually that was that made it worse somewhat, but this was the correct way to do it. So the other way is to increase the explore term here to make it um explore more. So maybe instead of one we can make it uh another value here. So let's see how this goes. Okay, I think let me go and tweak this uh, Monte Carlo tree search a bit. Tweak the parameters and we see how this works. But as of now, this looks quite nice. And uh, I think this is already quite a decent agent. So we see how this works. So uh, yeah, MCTS wins against Monte Carlo now. And then we try MCTS versus Monte Carlo. Let's see what happens. MCTS wins. Okay, let me try this. Monte Carlo perfect up with MCTS. Okay, so the perfect up wins about the same as perfect agent now, which makes sense. So yeah, in this case, MCTS did not choose, or uh, I mean, yet, yeah, I did not choose correctly. This one's supposed to be choose three matchsticks, but maybe because of the number of times it explores, it didn't explore enough. Yeah, so there's an element of randomness here, which could be solved. Yeah, but yeah, right now, this is the main thing that I think this is working, which is good. I uh, coded a Monte Carlo tree search from scratch. And uh, it's working, which means that yeah, I'm quite pleased uh, with the outcome. Okay. Yeah, over here, uh, Monte Carlo perfect op plays perfectly, so there's no chance to win. It's just this one. Uh, this MCTS should be able to, to win, actually, if it chooses correctly. Interesting. Okay, so yeah, that was more or less the Monte Carlo tree search thing. Yeah, so it chooses the anytime algorithm. Yeah, we can improve by domain knowledge, which is like maybe the the rollouts can make it perfect rollouts. I haven't tried the Monte Carlo tree search perfect rollout yet, but it should be able to perform better. Yeah, so you see in this case it works. It chooses the right match sticks, and then player one wins. Player one wins. Oh, oh, this is correct, but this move was wrong. <laughs> yeah, this is so weird. Yeah. Uh, 
uh, oh well, that uh, means that there's some improvements that can be made in this MCTS search. And yeah, I've got to go already. I hope you all uh, enjoyed this. I'll be uploading this uh, notebook as well uh, shortly. Yeah, and yeah, that's a live coding of Monte Carlo Tree Search. And yeah, that's it. And yep, signing off now. Yeah. Bye, Ren.